hotness and coldness of an object and how do we measure temperature by using thermometer. Today we are going to learn about transfer of heat. What do you mean by transfer of heat? The movement of high temperature to low temperature is called transfer of heat. Suppose you take a pan to boil water. After some times you keep a lid on it. Then you test the lid. What do you feel? You feel that the lid is very hot. From this what do you understand? You can understand that heat is transferred from pan to lid. And you keep a spoon on it. After sometimes you touch the spoon. What do you feel? You feel that the spoon is very hot. From this we can understand that heat is transferred from lid to spoon. That means heat is transferred from the hotter object to the colder object. The process by which heat is transferred from the hotter and to the colder end of an object is known as conduction. I repeat, the process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction. Conduction. Now let us watch an interesting video based on conduction. Take a knife, take few pins and place it on the knife in this fashion. Now when you place these pins, make sure that the pins are placed quite close to each other but at the same time no two pins should overlap with each other. Now what we want to do is, we want to fix these pins on this knife. So for that we make use of the wax from a candle. Now leave it for some time so that the pins get properly fixed on the knife. So now you see all the pins are fixed nicely with this knife. Now take the knife and bring it near the candle flame in such a way that the tip of the knife is on the candle flame. Now what do we observe? We observe that the first pin fell down. Why? Because the wax melted. And now we will see that with time, one by one the pins will fall down. Now can you tell me that what's happening here? Yes, conduction is happening. That's because the heat is getting transferred. So even though your knife is remain staying at the same place, the molecules inside the the knife is also at their own positions but, but what's happening is the heat is getting transferred from one molecule to the next and from the next molecule to the next and so on and that is why if you look at it the pin number one and two fell down now is the turn for third pin then the fourth pin then the fifth pin and so on. So here what we are observing is exactly similar to how the balls were uh, how the boys were passing on the balls from one to the next a question that might be arising in your mind that can we perform this experiment with just any material like i used a knife so do you think that this will work with just any material that you wish to well not really so knife in this case being made up of metal is a good conductor of heat and that is why we could see this phenomenon of conduction. 
Now, if you take some non-conductors, for example, if you take a plastic or if you take wood, then you will not be able to see this phenomenon of conduction. So therefore, it is important that you always choose a material which is a conductor. In fact, even with conductors, like even if you try it out with different metals, the conductivity of different metals might be different because of which the uh, speed with which heat gets conducted that might be different. Do all substances conduct heat easily? Let us see some examples. You might have seen your mother using metal spoons and wooden spoons for cooking. Ask your mother whether the wooden spoons get hot or the metal spoons get hot. Definitely your mother replied, metal spoons get hot easily. From this, we can understand that certain things like metals allow heat to pass through it. Why? Certain things like plastic and wood do not allow heat to pass through it. Clear children? Yes. The materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are conductors of heat. For example, aluminium, copper and iron. The materials which do not allow heat to pass through them easily are poor conductors of heat such as plastic and wood. Poor conductors are known as insulators. Conductors and insulators. The materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are conductors of heat. The materials which do not allow heat to pass through them are poor conductors of heat. That poor conductors are known as insulators. Clear children? Yes. The water and air are the poor conductors of heat. Then how does the heat transfer take place in these substances? Let us see. Experiment. Convection of heat. Let us learn about convection of heat in water. Take a round flask and fix it to a stand. Fill the flask with cold water. Then carefully drop a few crystals of potassium permanganate to the bottom of the flask. Now heat the water by placing a Bunsen burner with a small flame under the flask and observe the crystals. When the water at the bottom of the flask is heated, it expands. The expanded water is less dense than the surrounding water and therefore starts to rise. The cooler region of the water in the upper part of the flask being denser sink. Observe the colored water rising up the beaker side. Go across the top and then sink down to the other side of the beaker. This is called convection of heat in liquid. Convection is a mode of transfer of heat into liquid and gas. The air near the heat source gets hot and rises. The air from the sides comes in to take its place. In this way, the air gets heated. Dear children, now I am going to do an activity based on convection. Let us see. Light a candle. Keep one hand above the flame and one hand on the side of the flame. Do your hands feel equally hot? If not, which hand feels hotter and why? Notice that Towards the top, the air gets heated by convection. Therefore, the hand above the flame feels hot. 
on the sides however there is no convection and air does not feel as hot as at the top let us understand better with an example look at the first picture during the day the land gets heated faster than the water the air over the land becomes hotter and rises up the cooler air from the sea rushes in towards the land to take its place the warm air from the land moves towards the sea to complete the cycle the air from the sea is called the sea breeze look at the second picture at night it is exactly the reverse the water cools down more slowly than the land so the cool air from the land moves towards the sea this is called the land breeze yes when when we come out in the sun we feel warm how does the heat from the sun reach us it cannot reach us by conduction or convection from the sun the heat reaches us by another process known as radiation 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 is the transfer of heat energy from the hot body to the cold body it does not require any medium for example when we sit in front of our room heater we get heat by this process a hot pan kept away from the flame cools down as it transfers heat to the surroundings by radiation our body too gives heat to the surroundings and receives heat from it by radiation all hot bodies radiate heat when this heat falls on some object a part it is reflected a part is absorbed and a part may be transmitted the temperature of the object increases due to the absorbed part of the heat clear children okay you know that in summer we wear light colored clothes in winter we wear dark colored clothes why do we feel comfortable in such clothing during these seasons because dark colored clothes absorb more heat so we feel comfortable with dark colored clothes in winter light colored clothes reflect most of the heat that falls on them so we feel more comfortable with light colored clothes in summer i repeat in summer we wear light colored clothes they keep us cool in winter we wear dark colored clothes they keep us warm woolen clothes keep us warm in winter because wool is a poor conductor of heat and it has a trap between the fibers now let us summarize what you have learned there are three ways in which heat can flow from one body to another these are conduction convection and radiation in solids generally the heat is transferred by conduction in liquids and gases the heat is transferred by convection there is no medium is required for the transfer of heat by radiation dear children okay dear children take your science textbook and notebook see page number 45 now we will discuss the exercises after discussion all of you write these answers in the back side of the notebook are you ready okay first state similarities and differences between the laboratory thermometer and the clinical thermometer the first question you have already wrote in the notebook so no need to write in the notebook and second also no need to write in the notebook 
Third, fill in the blanks. A. The hotness of an object is determined by its dash. The answer will be temperature. B. Temperature of boiling water cannot be measured by a dash thermometer. The answer will be clinical thermometer. C. Temperature is measured in degree dash. The answer will be degree Celsius. D. No medium is required for transfer of heat by the process of dash. The answer will be radiation. E. A cold steel spoon is dipped in a cup of hot milk. Heat is transferred to its other end by the process of dash. The answer will be conduction. F. Clothes of dash colors absorb more heat better than clothes of light colors. The answer will be dark. Fourth. Match the following. First, land breeze blows during night. Second, sea breeze blows during day. Third, dark colored clothes are preferred during winter. Fourth, light colored clothes are preferred during summer. Fifth, discuss why wearing more layers of clothing during winter keeps us warmer than wearing just one thick piece of clothing. The answer will be more layers of clothing during winter keeps us warmer than wearing just one thick piece of clothing because air gets trapped in between layer. As air is a poor conductor of heat, it does not allow the escape of the heat from the body. Sixth, look at figure 413. Mark where the heat is being transferred by conduction by convection and by radiation. Mark it yourself. Seventh, in places of hot climate, it is advised that the outer walls of houses be painted white. Explain. In places of hot climate, it is advised that the outer walls of houses be painted white because white color reflects back most of the heat that falls on it. Question number 8. One liter of water at 30 degrees Celsius is mixed with one liter of water at 50 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the mixture will be the options are 80 degrees Celsius, more than 50 degrees Celsius but less than 80 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, between 30 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. Answer, the temperature of the mixture will be between 30 degrees Celsius and 50 degree Celsius because hot water loses the heat and simultaneously cold water gains the heat this keeps the temperature in between 30 degree Celsius and 50 degree Celsius the answer is option D question number 9 an iron bowl at 40 degrees Celsius is dropped in a mug containing water at 40 degrees Celsius. The heat will 
Option A. Flow from iron bowl to water. B. Not flow from iron bowl to water or from water to iron bowl. C. Flow from water to iron bowl. D. Increase the temperature of both. The answer will be option B. Not flow from iron bowl to water or from water to iron bowl because both of them have the same temperature. 10. A wooden spoon is dipped in a cup of ice cream. Its other end, option A, becomes cold by the process of conduction. B, becomes cold by the process of convection. C, becomes cold by the process of radiation. D, does not become cold. Answer will be Option D. Does not become cold. Because wood is a poor conductor of heat. Question number 11. Stainless steel pans are usually provided with copper bottoms. The reason for this could be that Option A. Copper bottom makes the pan more durable. B. Such pans appear colorful. C. Copper is a better conductor of heat than the stainless steel. D. Copper is easier to clean than the stainless steel. The answer will be C. Copper is a better conductor of heat than the stainless steel. Dear children, take your science notebook and write answer the following. First, define conduction. Answer, the process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction. Second, what do you mean by conductors and insulators? Answer, conductors. The materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are known as conductors. Example, copper, iron, etc. Insulators. The materials which do not allow heat to pass through them are known as insulators. Example, wood, plastic, etc. Third, a metal spoon becomes hot when it is placed in a cup of tea. Why? Answer. Metals are good conductors of heat. The heat get, gets transferred from the hot tea to the cool metal spoon by the process of conduction. Fourth, what is convection? Answer, convection is a mode of transfer of heat into liquid and gas. The air near the heat source gets hot and rises. The air from the sides comes in to take its place. In this way, the air gets heated. Fifth, explain sea breeze and land breeze. Answer. During the day, the land gets heated faster than the water. The air over the land becomes hotter and rises up.
the cooler air from the sea rushes in towards the land to take its place the warm air from the land moves towards the sea to complete the cycle the air from the sea is called sea breeze At night it is exactly the reverse the water cools down more slowly than the land so the cool air from the land moves to, towards the sea this is called the land breeze Sixth, why are we preferring light colored clothes in summer? Answer Dark colored objects are absorb more than the light colored objects. That is the reason we feel more comfortable in light colored clothes in the summer. Seven, woolen clothes keep us warm during winter. Why? Answer Woolen clothes keep us warm during winter because 
wool is a poor conductor of heat and it has air trapped in between the fibers Question number 8. Define radiation. Answer. Radiation is the transfer of heat energy from a hot body to a cold body. It does not require any medium. Example, a hot utensil kept away from the flame cools down as it transfers heat to the surroundings by radiation. By this, we are finishing our fourth lesson. I hope all of you understood this. Please read the textbook twice. Complete your notebook. Our pre midterm examination will be on August 1st week. So, study well. Okay, children. Take care. Have a good day.